Call of Duty has achieved a lot of titles in its 10 years on the scene. Most copies of a game sold in one day, beaten of course by GTA 5. Uh, best shoehorning in of a zombie. Uh, and uh, funniest infighting between developers. And what? I've got to do the whole history of Call of Duty from start to finish in under four minutes. No time for intros. Infinity Ward started out as their own competitor. Before becoming Infinity Ward, they, or at least a lot of them, were called 2015 Inc. And they were working on one of Call of Duty's biggest rivals, even though Call of Duty hadn't yet been invented. Medal of Honor. At that moment, 2003, Activision were looking for a development team to make a World War II shooter and hired them to make Call of Duty. Call of Duty differed from Medal of Honor in that you weren't just some lone soldier single-handedly winning the war, you were part of a larger group. Infinity Ward had a two-year gap in order to hit the next-gen consoles, and boy did they smash it with Call of Duty 2. Now for the first time, PC and console games were largely on a par, this was a big graphical step up, and health came not from boxes, but regeneration. This was a, forget all of that, sales, sales, sales. But what about the Xbox, the PS2? You can't just abandon them, Activision. Activision didn't, but Infinity Ward kind of had their hands full. So Activision gave it to Grey Matter Studios, now called Treyarch. So now you've got Infinity Ward, who made the main games, and Treyarch, who made the spin-offs. That's a relationship that won't get messy. And messy it did got. Activision gave the job of producing the next game, Call of Duty 3, to Treyarch, not Infinity Ward. Infinity Ward were bemused, to put it politely. They decided that their next game, Call of Duty 4, would be a game changer. Game changer. So, when Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare did away with the whole World War II thing and moved to the present day, lots of people were surprised. Activision was scared. And Treyarch was stunned, having spent a lot of time developing Call of Duty World at War, a game about the Second World War. Treyarch's pants were down, but they did have an ace up their sleeve, which was still up. Zombies. In a co-op mode called Nazi Zombies, you fought off horde after horde of Nazi zombies. Then, Infinity Ward made Modern Warfare 2, a game which did not shy from controversy with a harrowing scene at an airport. Then, Infinity Ward and Treyarch had a huge Barney. Infinity Ward heads got sacked and then sued Activision for withholding money. Treyarch kept away from this, whilst at the same time making Call of Duty Black Ops. Whilst Infinity Ward, er, uh, got over their problems in inverted commas with Activision, or at least half of them did, to make Modern Warfare 3. It's hard to keep up with the COD series. It reminds me of that two-headed monster in Sesame Street that's always trying to go in opposite directions. So, what's the next one called? Ghosts. It's called Ghosts. Who's it made by? Infinity Ward. So, that's the one without the zombies, right? For Call of Duty, this is it. The world's most popular first person shooter has held on to its position for over five years with every new release breaking some new record or another. Last year's Black Ops 2 was the fastest selling game in history, pulling in a billion dollars in just 15 days, something we'd have told you nothing was likely to top until Grand Theft Auto 5 accomplished the same in just three. It leaves Call of Duty with a point to make and, dare we say it, it feels as if publisher Activision are starting to sweat. Frankly, we can't blame them, with old rival Battlefield at COD's flank and Titanfall and Destiny only months away. This could be the moment that many have feared, the moment inevitable to all things, the end. Faced with their own mortality, developers Infinity Ward have decided to double down on the traits that make COD so popular in the first place in this latest instalment, Call of Duty Ghosts. The single-player campaign is yet another audacious blockbuster, set in the aftermath of a hijacked US defence weapon being turned on its creators. A decade later, devastated and weak, it's the perfect time for an all-out invasion by the Federation, a unification of South American countries who cross the equator looking for conquest. Now it's up to a small ragtag group of former spec ops and paramilitary soldiers called Ghosts to wage guerrilla warfare and win their country back. Oh, and we should mention the opening level is in space 
And there's a dog. And a deer. Hooray? Yep, it's fair to say that Call of Duty looks pretty much the same as we would expect, with its patriotic rah-rah, its exploding industrial complexes, and its preposterous military fantasy plots that somehow twist America to be the underdogs. But for most fans, this isn't a reason to put down any money. As always, it is Ghost's multiplayer that really needs to be convincing. The big changes this year are either quite subtle or found before the game even begins. Character customization, including the choice to play as a woman for the first time, is both the most obvious new feature and the most meaningless. New weapons and maps are a given, as are new game types and modes, most notably squads. A whole nother multiplayer game type, Squads, shares XP with regular multiplayer and involves teaming up with either AI bots or other players to complete team objectives. Every mode has new destructible environments like this gas station or this uh, telegraph pole, which will offer new approaches to kills and can majorly change matches mid-flow. You okay? What the? As a key launch title for both the PS4 and the Xbox One, it's crucial that Ghosts is appealing across platforms. And if you're a 360 player who's cautious about the next gen, Activision have got you covered. A special Call of Duty account will seamlessly transfer your stats and unlocks between the 360 and Xbox One editions of the game, something we'd like to see more of from all the other cross-gen launch titles. In the last few months, we've heard a lot of talk and a lot of promises with words like new and dynamic and first. But once you pick up a controller and get stuck into one of the new maps, you won't notice much that's changed. Ghosts is still Call of Duty, even with its scattered enhancements. How you feel about that will be a personal thing, but it's fair to say that fan excitement for more of the same is at an historic low. For that reason, Ghosts is possibly the most exciting Call of Duty game for some time, because whether you're a fan or not, this is it. A new beginning for the franchise, or quite possibly, the end. <laughs>